Hi, today we are going to discuss about hemodialysis vascular access. Hemodialysis access or vascular access is a way to reach the blood for hemodialysis. The access allow blood to travel through dialyzer for clearance. So we can classify vascular access into two acute hemodialysis vascular access and chronic hemodialysis vascular access. Acute is a temporary access and it is used for emergency care. And the chronic hemodialysis vascular access is for the permanent and this may establish when the patient has an estimated GFR is 15 to 20 ml per minute that means end stage renal disease. In acute hemodialysis vascular access we have internal jugular catheter subclavian catheter and femoral catheter and chronic hemodialysis vascular access we have native arteriovenous fistula synthetic graft made up of polytetrafluoroethylene and AV shunt and permanent catheter. Acute hemodialysis catheter we also called double lumen non-cuffed non-tunneled catheter is because in acute catheter we have two lumens and is don't have any dacron cuff and for the insertion we don't want to tunnel the skin so it is non tunneled catheter sometimes we also have a triple lumen catheter so the third lumen is available for blood drawing and the intravenous administration of drugs and fluid so this picture is showing two types of double lumen non cuffed catheter one is straight one and another is curved one. So straight one we can use for subclavian or femoral catheter and curved one we can use for internal jugular catheterization. In this picture is double lumen cuffed tunneled catheter. So in this we can see a dacron cuff. So we can call it cuffed catheter. This will insert, will make a tunnel throughout the skin. So we also call it tunneled catheter. And this is a permanent catheter. So this picture is showing two sites for acute hemodialysis catheterization. One is for internal jugular catheterization and another for subclavian catheter. So we can use internal jugular vein, subclavian vein or femoral vein for the acute hemodialysis catheterization. So this we call catheter insertion sites. For acute hemodialysis catheter, the maximum blood flow we can keep 300 ml per minute. Even though we keep 300 ml per minute, actual blood flow is around 250 ml per minute or less. This is because of recirculation. As we discuss, acute hemodialysis catheter is for temporary use. So internal jugular catheter are suitable for two to three weeks for use. And femoral catheter usually we do only for single treatment if the patient is ambulatory. That means if patient can walk, that means only for single treatment we can use femoral catheter. Or we can use three to seven days if the patient is bed bound patient that means is on ICU why we are recommending femoral catheter is for single treatment is because femoral catheter have a great chance for infection because it is near to our genital area so next we can discuss about double lumen cuffed tunneled catheter and this catheter is made up of silastic or silicone and other soft flexible polymer and the advantage is is less thrombogenic than polymer used for acute catheter so for the insertion we require fluoroscopy is due to a large size and confirmed tip location so in tunneled catheter we can allow blood flow faster than acute catheter and usually pump speed will keep around 400 ml per minute and actual blood flow rates are almost always lower than those reported by the blood pump 
is around 20% to 30% as we discussed earlier because of the recirculation. So if we compare catheter into fistula or craft, an increase in treatment time of approximately 20% is needed to achieve equivalent uric removal. Even the tunneled catheters are permanent. 74% we can survey for one year and only 43% can survey for two years. So after catheterization, the location of a catheter in subclavian and interventricular insertion is always confirmed by a chest x-ray prior to initiation of dialysis or the administration of anticoagulant, that means heparin. So this is very important. Next is catheter malfunctions. How we can define this? So failure to achieve blood flow rate at least 300 ml per minute on two consecutive occasion or less than 200 ml per minute on a single occasion. If it is early, that means improper position of catheter tip or subcutaneous kinking of catheter. Or if it is late, that is intraluminal thrombi and less commonly extraluminal thrombi. So next episode we can discuss about what are the common complications in vascular access, especially in catheter. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. More points we'll discuss on next episode.